Hello everyone, what's Gucci? Hope you're having an awesome day wherever and whenever you're watching this. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. Now the size of the gemstones in this video are shocking in and of themselves. I can't even comprehend how they would be worn as jewelry, like any pair of earrings or necklace made with them would either rip my earlobes right off or weigh my neck down considerably. But anyway, that's more of a gruesome consequence, most of these jewels didn't come right to rip earlobes off, but they did come cursed and all. And the story is a pretty interesting if I do say so myself, so without further ado, this is the top 10 scary cursed jewels. And also shout out to the W Brothers for sponsoring this video, their customized jewelry is insane and I feel like you can't get this type of amazing price or quality anywhere else. The company specializes in making stunning silver and gold pieces that are meant to basically last a lifetime. And to make sure they do, the company even offers life time maintenance on all custom orders so you're pretty much shining 24 7. I myself am actually allergic to fake jewelry like if I put on any in my ears my ears swell and they get infected so I just can't buy anything that rusts and their pieces 100% do not rust so they don't leave your skin green or harm it in any way. And the high quality silver means you can basically even wear the pieces in the shower too which is also pretty convenient. You can personalize your piece in any way so I'm talking colored enamel, engravings, gold finishes etc and they basically just give you a base and then you can add on top of that whatever you want and if that's not really your thing you can work with their designers and make something completely from scratch. And if customization isn't your thing then you can also just choose from all the amazing designs they already have on their website. Their spring collection is about to drop so if you are interested do check it out and you can get 15% off anything on the website by using our code MA15 and believe me guys you really don't want to miss out on this awesome deal. And thank you again to the W Brothers for sponsoring this video if you guys do want customized amazing pieces like the one I'm wearing right now, do check out the link in the bio below. Starting us off with number 10 is the Black Prince's Ruby. If you've seen any of the English coronations, then you have seen this gem. It's smack dab in the middle of England's imperial state crown, but it's not actually a ruby, it's called a red spinel. Also dubbed the Great Imposter, it has quite a bloody history. It belonged to the Sultan of Granada initially and was found near his corpse by Pedro the Cruel after him and his men stayed stabbed him to death. After obtaining it, Pedro's reign was challenged by his half-brother who appealed to Edward the Black Prince for help. They won and Edward was given the stone as a thank you. Around that time he contracted a disease as well and died from it 9 years later. Is the timing coincidental? I don't really know. Henry V was wearing the stone during the Battle of Agincourt where he nearly died and Richard III was wearing it when he died during the Battle of Bosworth. It was later sold to a jeweler in the 17th century and the curse continued by nearly destroying the jewelers with a mysterious fire. Thankfully the jewel hasn't done any damage since but I think it's done enough damage to last a lifetime. Coming in at number 9 is the Hope Diamond. Honestly this diamond is probably worth more than my whole life and I'm not even mad about it. This gem is one of the most famous jewels in the world and the earliest ownership records date back nearly 4 centuries. It weighs a hefty 45.5 carats, is a dark greyish blue colour and is apparently cursed. It was first bought in India in 1668 by John Baptist Tavernier and the gem was initially called the French Blue. JP, I'm just going to call him JP, JP sold it to King Louis XIV but it was stolen towards the end of 1792. A diamond of similar proportions was found in the possession of a London based diamond merchant Daniel Eliason in 1812 but by that point it was renamed to the Hope Diamond. It passed through King George IV's hands and then landed in Henry Henry Philip Hopes's hands. There's a lot of weird S sounds anyway. In 1909, it was sold to Pierre Cartier and then it was sold to socialite and heiress Evelyn Walsh McLean. Its curse was massively upplayed when it was being sold to her because apparently unlucky things made her lucky. She used to have find the hope parties where she'd hide it around her house and guests would have to find it. Someone could have easily just stolen it like easily. But anyway, things started going downhill very quickly. Her son was killed in a car accident, her husband ran off with someone else whilst destroying their fortune and then died in a sanitarium. Her daughter OD'd on sleeping pills, her family newspaper the Washington Post went bankrupt and then a year later she killed herself. Wow that was a lot. At number 8 we have the Koh Noor diamond. Can we just have a moment of silence for the fact I will probably never see a diamond of this size ever in my life? 
Thank you. This 186 carat diamond had a curse that only affected men. Um, Hindu descriptions of the diamond said he who owns this diamond will own the world but will also know all its misfortunes. Only God or women can wear it with impunity. The name is Persian for mountain of light and it went through many hands in its time. The emperor who built the Taj Mahal had it but his son imprisoned him in a fort after a coup. Apparently it was initially close to 800 carats but a Venetian gem cutter reduced it to around 186. It was in the hands of many local rulers, almost all of which met with really bloody deaths. Finally, in 1849, a treaty was signed and the stone was given to Queen Victoria. But the story just doesn't end here. On its journey to England, there was an outbreak of cholera on board, so locals in Mauritius threatened the crew and told them to leave the port or they'd attack the ship. A storm then occurred, lasting 12 hours, and then finally, it somehow made it to the royal. As a result of the curse, no male heir has ever worn it. And they probably never should. Filling our number 7 slot is the blue diamond affair. Now we have no idea where this diamond is and we also have no idea if it ever truly existed to begin with. Back in 1989, a Thai janitor working at the Saudi royal family's palace snuck into Prince Faisal bin Fad's room and stole a lot of jewellery. Like a lot. Royal family probably going to have a lot of jewellery. He hid the jewellery inside the bag of his vacuum cleaner and then smuggled them to Thailand. Amongst the stolen gems was you guessed it the blue diamond. However, here is where it gets tricky. According to Thai authorities, the diamond never existed. They arrested the janitor, but not before he had sold a lot of the jewels. He was put in prison, but released after three years, and most of the jewels given back to the Saudi royal family were fake. And the blue diamond was still nowhere to be found. After that, a slew of disappearances and murders of Saudi businessmen and diplomats who had gone to Bangkok to investigate the robbery raised major alarms. And I mean, why wouldn't it? Thai authorities insisted, however, the events were not linked to the diamond robbery. In 1995, the police officer in charge of the case was sentenced to death for ordering the murder of the janitor's wife and son for making the fake jewels. I mean, that's harsh. The kid was only 14 years old. Let's cut him some slack. Either way, the diamond is meant to curse anyone who handles it illegally, and so far, that's been everyone who has handled it. Now, at number six is the Delhi Purple Sapphire. Okay, first thing first, it's not even a sapphire, it's an amethyst, and it currently resides in London's Natural History Museum, and it has done since 1944. The gem came mounted on a ring in the form of a snake, and it was accompanied by a letter which said the stone was looted from the treasure of the temple of the god Indra at Kaunpur during the Indian Mutiny in 1855, and brought to this country by Colonel W. Ferris of the Bengal Cavalry. From the day he possessed it, he was unfortunate. Colonel Ferris died after he got the gem. It was then given to his son, then to a man called Edward Heron Allen, who gave it to a bunch of his friends who he said suffered from a trail of suicides, apparitions, disasters, and failed careers. Allen eventually got it back, obviously his friends obviously didn't want it, and decided to close it inside seven boxes and give it to his bank, saying it shouldn't be taken out until 33 years after his death. Well, his daughter waited less than a year before taking it out and donating it to the museum. And they've continued continue to ignore the letter's suggestion that the gem should be cast into the sea. And they haven't been screwed over yet, so, so far so good, I guess. Coming in at number 5 is the La Peregrina Pearl. Now this one weighed in at 50.6 carats and it was actually one of the biggest pearls in the world. The name means the wanderer and it was found in the Gulf of Panama during the 16th century. King Philip II gave it to Queen Mary I before their marriage but he left her after she couldn't give him a son. And she went on to become Bloody Mary so that's already one victim gone rogue. The pearl was given back to King Philip after her death and he proposed to her half sister Elizabeth. Already like that's just weird. How can you marry a sister then, mar then propose to her sister? It stayed in that family till the 19th century when Napoleon Bonaparte invaded and took the pearl. It went through the Bonaparte family for ages before being sold. It was then auctioned in 1969 to Richard Burton, who gave it to his wife Elizabeth Taylor. Not sure if you've heard of her. Probably not. She was just a small 
time actress, you know how it is. But anyway, the couple married and then got divorced twice, after which Elizabeth kept the pearl and married eight more times. Either way, it was dubbed the tempestuous token of love because no romantic relationship has ended well where the pearl is concerned. Hat number four is the Star of India. I've never actually seen a gem like this. It's a pale blue oval with a white star all over it, and it weighs 563.35 carats. It's one of the biggest gems in the world, and it actually has a star on both sides of it. It was initially mined in Sri Lanka and then donated to the American Museum of Natural History. However, towards the end of 1964, it was stolen alongside a bunch of other gems. The thieves unlocked a bathroom window all during open hours, went in at night, and got the sapphire. It was the only one in the collection protected by an alarm, but against all odds, the batteries of the alarm were dead and no guard was assigned to that room. So the robbery was pretty much foolproof. Fortunately, most of the jewels were recovered from a bus terminal locker, but a curse surrounded the gem ever since. Filling on number three slot is the Sansi Diamond. Now this one is a pale yellow gem weighing in at 55.2 carats. Again, massive, may as well be as big as my head. No, I'm kidding, but anyway. It's said that whoever has the gem will succumb to a violent, violent death. While others say it makes you invincible if procured under honest circumstances, which I mean is fair. Fair enough, I guess. It reached Europe from India in the 14th century, where it was placed in the crowns of many kings Charles the Bold, Francis Louis XVI, and England's Charles I. But they all suffered horrible deaths after coming into the gem. One legend associated with the diamond was especially gruesome. A courier was transporting the gem for Henry IV when he was robbed and murdered. The stone had to be retrieved from his stomach because he had swallowed it for safekeeping. It was later stolen during the French Revolution, but somehow was found and is now on display at the Louvre. Wow, they really shouldn't have been playing hot potato with this diamond, but then again, it may have just been knowingly passed on and used to cause harm. I mean, it could happen. You never know. Now, and number two is the Regent, and this story is also particularly gruesome, so let's dive into it. This one was also mined in India in the early 1700s, as most of these gems seem to have been. It was stolen from the mine by a slave who actually hid the gem in a self-inflicted wound on his leg. Desperate times, man. In desperate times, you gotta do what you gotta do. He struck up a deal with an English sea captain to smuggle the gem out of India, but on the day, the captain drowned him and sold the jewel himself. But before he died, it said the slave put a curse on the gem, and I mean, rightfully so. He didn't just self inflict a wound for storage to then be drowned for that same gem. The disrespect, I swear. An English governor called Thomas Pitt ended up buying the diamond and sold it to French regent Philippe II of Orleans, hence the name the regent. It was stolen during the French Revolution with the Sansi, but was then found. But then Napoleon I set it in the handle of his sword and died an untimely death. This one was just wrong and screwed up from the very beginning, like nothing about this story was good. Nothing at all. And finally, at number one is the Black Orlov. Now this one's really juicy, I'm not gonna lie. Weighing in at 67.5 carats, it was said to have initially been the eye of an idol of the god Brahma at a shrine near Pondicherry. It was then stolen by a monk which is said to have kickstarted its curse. In 1932, a diamond dealer called JW Paris took the gem to the US and soon after committed suicide by jumping off a skyscraper. It later belonged to two Russian princesses, Nadia Orlov, who it was named after, and Neolina Baryantinsky, both of whom committed suicide by jumping to their death in the 40s. After the string of tragedies attached to it, Charles F. Winston cut the stone into three pieces in an attempt to break the curse. Whether the curse was broken or not, is unclear, but the story gets shadier. Diamond scholar Ian Balfour said there's no evidence of any black diamonds found in India or even a Russian princess called Nadia Orlov. I mean, maybe she was just a more like low key princess, you know, like not a big time, just a small time princess. Who knows? And that's it for today's video, guys. I feel like we've all collectively learned about how bad it can be to have a huge ass gemstone like that on your bearing. I mean, everyone on this list was just taking L after L, if I'm honest, and I'm glad I wasn't one of them. Them. Let me know which story was your favorite in the comments below. And as always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.